So questions, we're going to do limited homework on this because I got a little too deep in, in, into my homework. We're going to do problems 1 and 3, 13, 15, 17, and 19. I'll do 2, 4 and the, the corresponding even problems. I don't think my graphs are big enough. So when I do problem 2, I'm going to blow it up and make a bigger version of the graph for problem 2. So in section 5.6, the graph for number 2 looks something like this. It has an x-intercept of negative 5, 0. It has an x-intercept of 2, 0. And I don't know exactly what the vertex is. It looks like it's negative 1, negative 12. It doesn't really matter exactly where the vertex is to answer the questions. So I'm going to segment this graph into the regions that I, that I need. I'm going to segment the graph into the region to the left of the x-intercept, the region between the x-intercepts, and the region to the right of the x-intercepts. So I'm going to go to the left of the x-intercepts, between the x-intercept, and to the right of the x-intercept. And I'm going to not include the intercept, and then I'll include the x-intercept. Oh, idiot. So this first region to the left of the x-intercept will go from the far left edge of the x-axis, which has an x-coordinate of negative infinity, up to the x-intercept, but not including the x-intercept. The bottom version of this will go from the far left edge of the x-axis, which has an x-coordinate of negative infinity, up to the x-intercept, and it will include it. Between the x-intercepts, the regions are going to either be the from x equal to negative 5 to x equal to 2, round brackets if I'm not including the x-intercepts where the y equal to 0, or negative 5 square bracket positive 2 if I'm including the x-intercepts. The right region is going to be, I should have different colored these, the right region is going to go from the x-coordinate of the x-intercept 2 to the far right edge of the x-axis, which has an x-coordinate of 2, round bracket on the 2 if I'm not including the x-intercepts, and it's going to be square bracketed on the 2 if I am including the x-intercepts. Now for each of these intervals, I'm going to describe if the y's are positive, negative, positive or equal to 0, negative or equal to 0. In this first region, because it corresponds to the point portion of the graph where the y's are above the x-axis, this region, I'm going to say the y's are positive but not equal to 0. Beneath it, same region including the x-intercepts, I'm going to say the y's are positive or equal to 0 because I'm including the point where the y is 0. The middle region, because it corresponds to the portion of the graph where the y's are beneath the x-axis, where the graph is beneath the x-axis, then the y's are less than 0. In this middle region, I'm going to say the y's are all less than 0 if I'm not including the x-intercepts. And I'm going to say the y's are less than 0 or equal to 0 if I'm including the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts have the equal to part. The far right region, because it corresponds to a point, the portion of the graph where the graph is above the x-axis and above the x-axis, the y's are positive. If I'm not including the x-intercept, I'm going to say the y's are positive. If I am including the x-intercepts, I'm going to say the y's are positive or equal to 0. So I have all six of my intervals described. Now I'm going to answer the questions. So there are six quest five questions to no number 2. 2a is one that doesn't ask for an interval. 2a says, find the values of x where the y equals to 0. This isn't calling out an interval, 
the, uh, the intervals have to do with less thans and greater thans. 2a is just calling out the two points on the graph where the y equal to 0. This is saying find the x coordinates where the y specifically equals 0. This is going to be x equal to negative 5 and x equal to 2. Those are this is not an inequality, so it's not asking for an interval, it's asking for specific x's. 2b says find the intervals where the f of x's are greater than 0, but not equal to 0. And if I look at my template here, that region right there, and this region out here, is going to correspond to that because the y's are above the x-axis and I'm not including the x-intercept so the y's are all positive. So for part b, I'm going to take the interval from negative infinity to negative 5 and the interval from 2 to infinity and shove them in my answer. When we have multiple intervals, we separate them with a u or a union symbol. 2c wants me to find the region where the y's are negative but not equal to 0, that's that region right there, which is the region between negative 5 and 2, double round bracketed. 2d, I've done all the work, now I'm just fussing through and figuring out which intervals I want. Want the intervals where the y's are greater than or equal to 0, and that's going to be that interval and that interval, the interval from negative infinity round bracket on the infinity to negative 5, square bracket on the 5 to include the x-intercept, union, 2 to infinity. And the last part of this wants to know where the f of x's are less than or equal to 0, and that's just that interval, square bracket negative 5, square bracket 2. Problem 1 is a same style other than the x-intercepts are at the point negative 4, 0 and positive 3, 0. So for number one, you're supposed to answer all six questions, or all five questions, where are the x's equal to 0, greater than 0, less than 0, greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 0 for a right side up parabola. And then 3 and 4 want us to do the same for an upside down parabola, so I'm about to do 4. If the parabola is right side up, it goes greater than, less than, greater than. The outside intervals are for the greater than, the middle intervals for the less than. So here, it was going to go outside interval for a greater than, middle interval for a less than, outside interval for a greater than, middle interval for a less than, and it's just a matter if I have the or equal to's or not if I'm including the x-intercepts or I'm not including the x-intercepts. When I flip the graph over, these are going to flip. So problem four asks me to analyze the same style of graph. It's flipped over, but it has the same x-intercepts. It has an x-intercept of negative 5, 0, an x-intercept of 2, 0, and doesn't matter exactly what the vertex is when I go to answer these. So I'm going to separate this graph into the regions that it needs to be separated into. To the left of the x-intercept, and I'm without including the x-intercept in width including can't even read that the x-intercept first interval is going to go from the far left edge of the x-axis this is the point negative 5 0 just in case it's not readable the first point the first region is going to go from the far left edge of the x-axis which has an x-coordinate of negative infinity up to the x-intercept, but not including the x-intercept, so it's round bracketed. Beneath it, if I'm counting the same interval and I'm including the x-intercepts, I just square up the 
the x-intercept bracket. And then I'll do the middle interval, which is between the x-intercepts. And between the x-intercepts, if I'm not including the x-intercept, it would be from the x-intercept at negative 5 to the x-intercept at 2 double round bracketed if you're including everything but the x-intercepts, everything between but not including the x-intercepts, and double square bracketed if you're including the x-intercepts. And then the last interval to the right of the x-intercept, it's going to be from the x-coordinate of the x-intercept, which is 2, to the far right edge of the x-axis, which is infinity, double round bracket if I'm not including the x-intercept, square bracket on the x-intercept 2 if I'm including it. Now I'm going to describe each one of these intervals, whether they're um, positive-wise or negative-wise. The first interval, because the graph is beneath the x-axis, the y's are less than 0. So this interval right here, I would say the y's are all strictly less than 0. I'm not including the x-intercept, so I don't add the equal to 0. Whereas in this one, I'm counting all the y's that have negative y-coordinates, and I'm including the x-intercept, the which has the equal to 0. The middle portion of my graph, because the graph is above the x-axis, this middle region, I'm going to say the y's are strictly greater than 0 because the graph is above the x-axis and I'm not including the points that have a y equal to 0. The square bracketed version of this, I'm going to say the y's are either greater than 0 if they're above the x-axis or equal to 0 if they're on the x-axis. The far right interval, this one corresponds to the portion of the graph that's beneath the x-axis. When graphs are beneath the x-axis, y's are negative, so this region corresponds to negative y's, or f of x is less than 0. This region corresponds to negative y's, and it includes the x-intercept, so it's an, or, or equal to 0. Have everything labeled out now I'm going to answer. 4a doesn't ask for an interval. It asks to find where the y's are equal to 0. And it wants the values of x not in an interval form, but with the values of x where the y's are equal to 0. That's just the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts. It's going to be x equal to negative 5 and x equal to 2. For b, wants the intervals where the, f, where the y's are greater than but not equal to 0. And that's just that interval right there, the interval from negative 5 to positive 2. For C, wants to know where the y's are less than but not equal to 0. For C is calling out that interval, and it's calling out that interval. So I'm going to put those two intervals, because those where the y's are negative but not equal to 0, in my answer to part C. So negative infinity to negative 5, union 2 to infinity. For D, wants the interval where the y's are positive or equal to 0, and that's that region, it's double square bracket, negative 5, comma 2. And for E, wants the region where the y's are negative or equal to 0, that's going to be that region and that region, the region from negative infinity to negative 5, union, 2 to infinity. That's everything there is to know theoretically. Then we just get a little bit of algebra. The algebra is kind of insignificant. Question 3 is an upside down parabola that has x intercepts at negative 4, 0, and 3, 0, and you're supposed to answer these. Where are the y's equal to 0, greater than 0, less than 0, greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 0? That's the non-algebra part of this. The algebra part really isn't too bad. So in the beginning, we're just going to do 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're going to skip these because it's just too much theory, and, and you don't need this theory in intermediate in college algebra. 
The next things we're going to do is we're going to do the problems that don't have the graphs. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. How am I going to do them? I'm going to sketch a graph and use the graph to answer the question. So 13 through 27, we're going to stop at 19, ask exactly the same questions. They give me an equation that would graph to be a parabola, but they don't give me the graph. I'm going to need to get the graph, and I'm going to need to get the x-intercepts on the graph. So when I go to do the next chunk of problems up through 19, I'm stuck doing a little bit of algebra first. So for these, I'm going to need to find the x-intercepts because those are the important numbers. And make a table. Then I'm going to sketch a graph. And then I'm going to answer the questions after I divvy it up into intervals. So part question 14 gives me the function x squared plus 8x minus 20. I need to find the x-intercepts. You find the x-intercepts by taking the function and setting it equal to 0. So part of my algebra here is to find the x-intercepts because those are the important parts. And I'm going to find the x-intercepts here by taking the function and setting it equal to 0. And this is a kind of problem that I could solve by factoring. I'm going to factor this and it's going to factor into x plus 10 and x minus 2 because the numbers have to multiply to negative 20 and subtract to 8. So I set it equal to 0 in my attempt to find the x-intercepts. The nature of this problem lends itself to factoring. turns out that one of the x-intercepts is going to be at negative 10. It's actually going to be the point negative 10, 0. And the other x-intercept is going to be at the point 2, 0. So when I go to sketch my graph for number 14, I'm going to plot the point negative 10, 0 as an x-intercept and 2, 0 as an x-intercept. That's going to be good, but not enough to do a graph. So now I'm going to do a table a really small table in this problem to if I want to graph this parabola I have to use the negative b over 2a for the number in the middle of my x column the reason I'm using a formula is because there's two x's is like the bottom problems in section 5 3 so I'm going to do negative b which is going to be negative 8 over 2a which is 2 times 1 because in this problem a is equal to 1, b is equal to 8. So I'm going to get negative b, which is negative 8, over 2 times 1, which is 2. I'm going to put negative 4 in the middle of my x column, then maybe go negative 5 and negative 6. I'm going to get some y's for myself now. So I don't want to do y's by hand. So mode 7, you have to do y's by hand if you don't have technology for this. Alpha x squared plus 8 alpha x minus 20 start at negative 5 I'm doing a crunched down table it's gonna give me a mistake if I do this it should be negative 3 here end at negative 3 step 1 so my y's are negative 35 negative 36 negative 35 the only thing I really need to plot is the vertex and the x-intercepts to answer my question so I'm getting ready to make a graph and I'm doing the most lazy graph ever for this. I'm going to plot this x-intercept at negative 10, 0. This x-intercept at 2, 0. And at negative 4, negative 36, somewhere down here, the vertex. So my graph is going to look like that. It's not the most accurate graph in the world, but it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to segregate the graph into its regions. The region to the left of the x-intercept, between the x-intercepts, to the right of the x-intercepts. To the left of the x-intercept, it's going to be negative infinity, comma, negative 10, double round bracket if I'm not including the x-intercept, 
or it's going to be negative infinity comma negative 10 square bracket on the negative 10 if I'm including the x-intercept. Between the x-intercepts, it's either going to be negative 10 comma 2 double round bracket if I'm not including the x-intercepts, negative 10 comma positive 2 double square bracket if I'm including the x-intercepts. To the right of the x intercept, the region's either going to be 2 comma infinity, if I'm not including the x-intercept, square bracket to round bracket infinity, if I am including the x-intercept. For the far left regions, because the graph is above the x-axis, the region is a solution to either greater than 0, if I'm not including the x-intercepts, greater than or equal to zero if I am including the x-intercepts. The middle region, because the graph is beneath the x-axis, the interval is either a solution to less than zero if I'm not including the x-intercepts, less than or equal to zero if I am including the x-intercepts. The far right region is either a solution to greater than zero if I'm not including the x-intercepts, greater than or equal to zero if I am including the x-intercepts. I need to pause the video and make a part three to finish this up because it's getting ready to hiccup.